The Remington Model 95 was introduced in 1866 and was in production for almost 70 years, with about 132,000 being made. Chambered 41 rimfire, this double barrel derringer is instantly recognizable to anyone who's seen a TV or movie western, where it can usually be found being discreetly carried in a card sharp's boot or giving a robber a surprise belly full of lead. So enduring is the legacy of this little pistol, you can still find a very similar model being made today, some 150 years after Remington first developed it. Bond Arms manufactures several pistols that closely resemble the old Model 95 Derringer in both looks and in operation. They make a number of different models in several calibers, but the one we'll be looking at today is the Defender and 45 Colt, which will also take 410 shotgun shells as well. This Derringer has 3 inch barrels and weighs about 20 ounces. It operates in a similar way to the old Remington Model 95. Rotating a lever unlocks the barrel so they can be tipped up for loading or unloading. One thing to note is that since these barrels are so short, there is not much room left for the rifling, so there looks to be only about half inch of rifling or so in there, which may be a contributing factor to the results we got when we fire this thing, as you'll see later. These are single action only pistols, so you have to cock the hammer in order to fire each shot. One other neat feature of these is that the trigger guard can be removed, which makes it even more closely resemble the old Remington Derringer. So let's get this out to the range now and see what it will do. All right, we're at the range with the Bond Arms Defender. I'm going to be shooting at a range of about seven yards or so, and what I'm going to be shooting in it is a 45 Schofield. I have these left over from the last video, and what I have them loaded with is a 250 grain lead bullet with 25 grains of GoX 2F black powder. That's right, we're going to be shooting this with some black powder loads. So, let's see what happens. Here we go. All right. <laughs> All right, let's look at the target here. All right, so this was the first shot with the top barrel and it missed the target completely. And this was the second shot with the bottom barrel. So that was a good hit. Uh, I'm gonna load up a couple more and try again, see what we can do here. So there's the next two shots. One of them hit up here a little high again, and the other one hit down here. So I think the top barrel is hitting a little bit high, and the bottom barrel is, seems to be more, more on. So I'm going to take a couple more shots and uh, see what we can get. Yeah, so we're definitely seeing a pattern here of one of the barrels shooting way high and the other one shooting way low. And I just noticed we're also getting some keyhole in here. I mean, that's a definite keyhole there, there. That one up there looks like a keyhole too. So that's interesting. Okay, so there's a couple observations to talk about here, and the first is the trigger pull. Using the trigger on this requires more of a downward push on it, which is certainly different from just about every other handgun out there, and quite frankly is taking some getting used to. The next point is the keyholing we're getting. The bolts I'm using are primarily made for black powder load, so they're cast out of a very soft lead, and I think what's happening is the bolts are just too soft to allow what little rifling there is 
to grab on and stabilize them. So I think if I was using a harder cast bullet or a jacket of bullets, I'd get better results, but that'll have to be a topic for a different video. So there it is, the Bond Arms Defender, a modern rendition of a 19th century design, a system still going strong more than 150 years later.